Welcome to another Late Night Tech. Okay, I've had a request out there to um, put a video together on how to compile OpenWRT for a virtual machine. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you are just joining the channel and you're a little lost, the first video you're seeing, I would suggest uh, watching how to compile OpenWRT for the Raspberry Pi. And that will get you caught up to this point, which is how to set up an environment for compiling an OpenWRT image. All right, so we're going to hop into Make Menu Config. We can select our options. And let me just choose another one here to kind of clear everything out. Over the default. Okay, so we are going to select x86, assuming you are running a virtual machine on an x86 platform. So that would be an you know, Intel-based processor, an AMD-based processor. Subtarget, x86-64. It's going to auto-select that uh, generic profile. Target images, you'll scroll down and you'll want to select either a VDI for VirtualBox or a VMDK for uh, VMware. Don't need gzip. Exit. And um, I'm just going to do a base image, but you can, you're free to select any packages that you really want. Um, I'm going to go and obviously select Lucy, so we have a web interface for configuring, choosing the Wolf SSL backend. Exit out and save my config. All right. And now we just have to make, to compile our image. All right, we're finished. So well, if you navigate to OpenWRT, bin, targets, x86, 64, here we are. So as you can see, we have an EXT combined EFI BDI. And then uh, we also have this BMDK. So those are your two virtual disk files. You can use the squash file system if you want. Um, You'll copy these over to the PC that is going to host your virtual machine, and you will uh, use these files as your hard drives, essentially, uh, for those virtual machines. So let me just uh, show you here. This is a virtual machine that I just created, and I've uh, hit the uh, local interface for Lucy. So I'm just going to hit log in here. So if you look at WAN here, it has the IP address of 192.168.7.56. And my LAN adapter is the 192.168.1.1, the local network on the OpenWTR, OpenWRT router. And just to show you the firewall, basically just picked up default configuration right out of the box and is up and running. So I should at this point just be able to route or hit a website on the internet because my uh, physical network on the house is routing network or traffic to the internet. So obviously my router will be a host on that network and will also be allowed to route traffic. So there we go. So let me hop over now and show you how to set up the VM. Uh, you will just need to copy your virtual disk again to the machine that you're going to uh, host the VM on. And um, it's a pretty simple process. I'll just show you how to create how I create an OpenWRT uh, virtual machine in VirtualBox. So I've clicked on the Create New Machine button here in Virtual Machine and have the dialog open. And I'm going to give this virtual machine a name. I'm going to select uh, the location where I want the uh, folder to be created. The operating system type is Linux. The version is other, Linux 64-bit. I'm gonna give this two gigs. You can give it more. Um, it's just typically, you know, I don't 
I'll leverage this very hard, so that seems to be plenty. I'm going to select Use an Existing Virtual Hard Disk File. And then I'm going to find this file. So let me browse and add it to my library here. All right, so it's created my machine. Now there are a few other settings that we need to uh, select. So let me switch over to this window. Okay, so in general terms, I don't really change any of the general settings here. Um, I just keep all of those default. Uh, for system, I don't need a floppy and I don't need an optical disk. Processor, I usually bump up to at least two CPUs. And everything else I uh, leave as default. I don't change anything for display because this virtual machine really doesn't need much horsepower for display. Uh, here for storage, uh, my default is an IDE controller. I don't think this really matters. You can use SATA, uh, you can use SCSI. It really isn't gonna, I think, drastically affect the performance for the use case um, I have here. I don't need audio. Now, network, we're gonna need two adapters. The first adapter, we want to be an internal network. So I'm gonna select internal network, and here I have this um, name selected, INT Net. Uh, this is a virtual switch that I created. And uh, the idea is that you know you have a, a private switch that just your VMs will connect to for their local area network. They're not bridged, they're not connected to my main network in the house, they, this is a private network just for them. So that's gonna be the internal LAN. And then my second adapter, I'm going to select bridged. And this is going to share my local NIC, or essentially, or it's you know, gonna act like I'm plugging this network adapter straight into my um, public network here at the house. And that will allow it to get an IP address on my network, which will then route out through the internet. You could um, connect this directly to a physical adapter and plug that into your cable modem if you wanted to have a virtual machine set up as your um, you know, router for your entire house or your entire network, right? You, you could kind of run that option as well. So private LAN on a private switch, and my WAN is uh, adapter to an unabridged adapter. No serial ports, standard default for USB and default everywhere else. Click OK. And now we're going to start this guy up. And let me just switch over to this screen. All right, so as you can see, up and running. And I believe the command is, yep, interface config. And uh, you'll see here that my ETH1 has an IP address of 192.168.7.56. So that is on my, um, that's the WAN adapter there on the uh, network. Feel free to like and subscribe, hit the alarm bell for notifications on future videos, and comments for topics you'd like me to cover. Thanks again.